This is I Should Be Writing number 521. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. I have a two, day two of a headache. It's not that bad, but it's one of those that I know just, I sort of picture it as a warty little monster that just kind of sits on the base of my neck and won't move. So it's not, it's not that bad, but I don't want it there. Who does? I have been trying to force myself to not listen to things that stimulate my brain so that I will do, um, I will keep brainstorming and thinking of neat things. And it's going okay, actually. Um, I think I'm ready to start writing on a new weird thing. And at these days, a new weird thing is not drinking apple cider vinegar to cure your, um, toe callus. It's more, it's something that nobody else has to approve. I, I complained about it at length on Tuesday. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I, I, starting my weird thing that, that probably will crash and burn. But you know what? That's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about crashing and burning. A.K. Quimmy under Pope. Now, I have never known how to pronounce your name. And I know if I pronounce it, I'll pronounce it wrong. But it ends with Livick, so I appreciate you coming and hanging out in the chat, and I'm sorry I've never known how to pronounce your name. Hey Todd, hey Cheryl. I was about to go tell the Discord that we were live, but it looks like you guys already know. I'll say it anyway. Um, yeah, so I had... Hey, Devo Spice. I had a... a epiphany the other day, and it's actually one of those things where I wished that I recorded whenever I wanted to instead of live, because I kind of wanted to talk about it when I was, when it was all fresh in my head. But I think I'm going to title this episode, Bad Days Are the Best. I, uh, I, I think that the first concept of this, I got a how to write romance book, and actually it's quite bad, because it's more of a memoir than how to write romance. But, so I, I turned it in, but I realized one of the things she talked about stuck with me. And it starts out as being a religious metaphor, but I'm not religious, and which is why it didn't hit me at first, but like it stayed in my mind and I thought it, it didn't have to be a religious thing. But the story was, um, she was saying when she was young, she found church to be really boring and hated it. And then the priest told her that, you know, there was a man who went and prayed on a cold floor on his knees every day. And it was cold and it was terrible and he hated it. And there was a man that did the same thing and loved it because he loved being closer to God and everything was wonderful. And, uh, hey Taylor, hey Billy boy. Um, um, so, and the priest was asking the, the congregation who's closer to God and he said it was the guy who hated it because he did the right thing even though he hated it. And the guy who loved it, if he had a bad day, would he have shown up? And I thought that was kind of dumb. But then I was thinking about, um, where did it go from there? Dang it. Anyway, I'll, I'll come up with it as I'm talking. It, I've talked a lot about how we need to trust our, um, subconscious. And it's hard to, because we don't really talk a lot. You know, there's not a lot of back and, back and forth with subconscious. But you know, your, your brain knows a lot more than you give it credit for. Like, you tell your brain, hey, there's a puddle there. I would like to jump over the puddle. And the brain does complex math, not literally, but it tells your legs how much power to jump with. Is it a little puddle? Is it a massive puddle? Do you think you're going to make it? I mean, it's like, that's all... You're not thinking that. You're not thinking about whatever math problem you need to get forced to jump over the puddle and take into account your backpack. But that's like instinct. But I think w when we're working, we're, we're working on our creative muscles. Those don't exist, but I think the metaphor is sound. And 
when we have a day where we do not care or things are awful and we show up we think if we if we get anything done it's probably going to be crap and you're going to hate it but what you're doing is you're basically saying my job is to show up and maybe give a little bit of guidance but the subconscious is like oh this is what we've been training for okay and I'm not saying it's going to be super easy if you sit down after a bad day and write. I'm just saying that the thing that you need to give it is you need to be there. And then it will learn that this is a thing we do, not this is a thing I do when days are good. And it goes back to the praying guy, if the subconscious is God. Yeah, we gotta unpack that for a little while. But really, you are you don't want to train yourself to say, um, I'm only going to write when I'm inspired, when I feel good, when I feel happy. You're going to train yourself that I'm going to write when I sit down. I'm going to write when I open Scrivener. When I uh, talked to Cory Doctorow in 2006 and he was saying how he thought that people setting up um, rituals for writing was terrible because you don't want to train yourself. If you train yourself to work at your desk with your coffee, with a special music playing, then what are you going to do when you're away from your desk and you don't ha or you don't have any coffee or your music won't work? And I thought, that makes a lot of sense. I want to be able to write in an airport. I want to be able to write when I'm traveling. And so I rejected that whole concept of ritual. But I'm starting to come around to the thing of, I don't want to train my brain that we can't operate somewhere else. But I do want my brain to, to have certain triggers to say, oh, it's writing time. Uh, I've been reading Atomic Habits. I read it once, and apparently it all fell out of my head, and I'm reading it again, but I'm getting a lot more out of it this time. Um, because they, the parallel of the praying guy in the romance book, and training yourself that it, it's, it's instilling a habit by training yourself. If you only run when it's sunny, or only work out when uh, you're don't work late or, or or something I don't know anyway the excuses you put in front of things like working bettering yourself essentially but if you tell your brain that that this is only hinging on me sitting down and pulling up Scrivener or whatever ritual you have then your brain will start to realize oh okay so we're doing this and I I can I can uh, agree with this. It's it's worked for me, which is you have you sit down to write and you hate it. It's a terrible day. It's awful. You think it's drivel. 6 months down the line, if you look at what that what you're writing now, you're probably not going to be able to find the bad day. And that's your subconscious helping you along. Again, I'm not I'm not saying this is magic and easy. But I'm saying we're trainable, and we need to remember that. When I was trying to get into a running habit this summer, which I lost because I injured my knee. Doing better. Should probably get back on that. I actually am walking again, but tangent. I kept telling myself that I've already won by getting out there. I put my shoes on, and I got moving. I've won running and walking according to the lady in my ears that's just that's just the thing I'm doing now that I've won because I had a fight with myself and I won and I told myself this is when we run when I put my shoes on and go outside cue running music so um it's just the same 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 thing it's like oftentimes that first step is terrifying which is why a lot of people who do habit things say, um, 
give yourself a limit of do like a page, do half a page. Make your goal super tiny. And not only will you um, achieve it pretty easily, and you will have told your brain, when we sit down, we write. You'll also possibly want to write more. And if you don't, that's okay, because you hit your goal. So, I think when... That's right, I was going to bring up the woman from the, from the, the Australian cooking show, Zumba. Uh, there's the Zuma's Just Desserts on Netflix. I've mentioned her before. There's a woman who dominates the entire season. And she's amazing. And the way the program goes is you have um, everybody cooks according to whatever they tell them to. And then they take the bottom two and make them cook against each other. And the worst one goes home. So if you screw up the first one, you have a chance to stay in. Albeit it's 50-50, whereas it was a lot better the first time. But this woman had not only dominated for the entire season, but also um, had never gone to the second round of, of whether somebody gets kicked off or not. And she knew about three quarters in that it was, it was, it, her recipe was not going to work. And, yeah, I love that show. I, I do, too. It's a lot of fun. Um, but she started to lose it. I mean, she was running around, talking to herself a mile a minute, and just going on and on and on and on, and then she broke down in tears. And I'm like, that's a woman who's never failed. And, you know, when you have... When you do, um, when you send out a story, you get a rejection. And it's kind of like you fall into a pit. And you're like, well, crap. I'm in this pit. No one has ever felt the aloneness and self-loathing and absolute hopelessness that I'm feeling right now after this rejection. And I'll never write anything of worth again. And then you get over yourself and you climb out of the hole. You realize there's a ladder right over there. And you work again. And maybe you'll fall in the hole again. You're like, alright, this does suck. But there's a ladder over there, so I'm going to get out. And then you work harder. You figure out, you know, you get comfortable with the fact that, okay, I fall in a hole, but no one's killing me. No one's saying you'll never write in this city again. And even if they are, they're wrong. Nobody can step on your career and kill it entirely. And you just say, oh, a rejection. All right, I'll send it somewhere else. But if you're somebody who like sells your first five stories and then you fall into the hole, you are completely out of your element. It's like, it's not even, you didn't even know a hole was there. And now you're in it. And you don't know where the ladder is. You don't know if anybody else is in there with you. And you do not know what to do. While the other person's like, yeah, I hang out here occasionally. You know, sometimes when I get bored. And you actually, you're better off failing, learning how to fail. Learning how to get back up after you fail. Another thing the Atomic Habits guy said was uh, a lot of people feel like if they try to create a habit, then they're, um, if they miss a day, then it's like, oh, well, it's all over now. But he's like, the difference between the people who successfully make habits and the people who don't are the people who successfully make the habits allow themselves like one day to slip. So if you do slip, we are gonna, we're all going to slip then you make sure to do it the next day. So, it, it all boils down to show up. Just show up. It may feel dark and scary, it may feel really terrible, but just show up for a little while. 
And, you know, if, you're, if your subconscious is saying, hey, that Mer, she was an a-hole, she's terrible, she's wrong about everything, and you can't get anything out, you still did your part. You showed up. So, close everything down, walk away, and try again tomorrow. Because you're telling your subconscious, no, you're not beating me. No, you are going to give something up at some point. New Year's resolution syndrome, yeah, exactly. I hate New Year's resolutions because I never, ever, ever want to do anything on New Year's Day. It's like, either I just want to relax and do the whole, holidays are over, I can chill now, or I'm hungover, I'll be honest, or, you know, I'm, I'm cleaning up from a meal or a party and don't feel like I want to go for that run, and... Like, New Year's Day is, like, one of the worst days to start new habits because that's one of the most sloth slothful days of the year for me. So, um, yeah. So that that's my theory about the whole bad days are the best days because I think bad days are the best time to train your brain to do the things you don't want to do. Now, you know that I am struggling with this, too. You know it. I'm not being a hypocrite here. I am going to work hard to try to follow this. And I want to see what happens. Because I'm... I want the habits, too. The only thing... The only habit I'm working on right now is actually streaming. It's... it's the whole consistency thing is really helping me. Um, what's the book I mentioned uh, under Pope Wants to Know? Atomic Habits, yes. Jay Blank, I have a hard time explaining the same feeling about New Year's to my family. I mean, why not just say that the all the habits can start on day two? Because New Year's Day is a holiday. Um. So yeah, that's 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 been on my mind trying to remember that the bad days are the best times to train your brain to get into a habit because you're telling your brain we're still doing this. It may suck. But we're still doing this. So that's my message for today. I know I went super long on Tuesday. If you guys in the chat, uh, not very chatty today. Uh, good. Oh, thank you, Todd. I missed your comment about uh, the Ditch Diggers episode. Yeah, we love having um, having Todd on or having Sean on. Uh, sorry, Todd, because we recently uh, did Sean Pryor interview on Ditch Diggers. He's a comic creator. I think his Kickstarter's over or I, w or I would promote it. I think it ended yesterday. But I know he got um, funded, so way to go, Sean. Um, so if anybody in the chat or in the Discord want me to talk about anything, I can. Otherwise, I am just broken hearted about the latest things happening in Blazeball. Two of my favorite characters, players, was incinerated the other night. And then two more were incinerated this morning. And I don't know where to look. It's just I, I it's like are they gonna completely erase my team and then what where what team do I have? It's it's like Theseus's boat. If you take the Hades Tigers and remove every single player on the team and replace them with another player. Are they still the Tigers? I guess they are. Because there's a fictional person who owns the fictional team, the Tigers, and can call anything the Tigers that they want. But still, you know, you put your you put your fandom power behind Jessica Telephone and she gets traded. And you put your fan power behind Yasmeen Mason and Moody Cookbook and they get incinerated. And you're like, I don't even know who to root for. I'm scared to root for anybody right now. I'm going to get my heart broken again. I mean, Schmurgle. Schmurgle just got brought on with the last incinerations, and Schmurgle got incinerated this morning. I, I, I don't know what to say. And yes, if you don't know what we're talking about, I'm sorry. Um, we did this. We taunted the peanut. I did not taunt the peanut. I went and favorited I, I put an idol for behind one of the peanut people so don't blame me it's a very weird thing where 
we had to vote to get three specific people in slots one, two, and three of the idle board. We did not get three up there. We got one up there. And then the great peanut god put the other two in hard peanut shells and got really mad at us. And that's when all the incineration started. It's probably more interesting out of context. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I read that somebody, like, had tried to come into Blazeball this week and, like, are completely lost because it's a weird little fantasy browser game that has more and more strange things piled on, added to it every week. So we're, like, in week seven and... Now, the weather consists of solar eclipses, feedback, reverb, rain of peanuts, birds, blood drain. Have I left anything out? And each of those weather patterns have a chance, has a chance to change something in the game. Solar eclipses is when the rogue empires come out and start incinerating people. The incineration started because of the necromancy. Because, uh, it's all Jalen Hot Dog Fingers' fault. Jalen Hot Dog Fingers got, got brought up, got brought back from the dead. And now whenever she or they throw a wild pitch and hit somebody, oftentimes they become unstable and get incinerated. How do we watch baseball anyway? It's, um... Speaking gibberish. <laughs> yes, we, we, it, I know it sounds like gibberish. It really does. Um, it's not, yeah, it's not Jalen Hot Dog Finger's fault. Um, hey, okay, Cunning. Thank you for subscribing. Um, good use of the act chicken. So, uh, sorry, what was I gonna. How do we watch Blazeball? Yes, it's Blazeball.com. It's a browser game. It's actually just random number generated. You you go in and you see the mostly it's all text. It's 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 pretty. It's like nice on the eyes. We're not thinking we're like back in you know ninety seven or something, but it's all text and it's um you just see okay so the tigers are playing the crabs. Oh no, it's not all text because there are images for each uh, team. But tigers are playing crabs. Tigers have a 57% chance. Crabs have a 43% chance. Uh, these two people are pitching. And if the game is active, then you on the other side... I, I realize I'm going the wrong way. I need to be doing it this for you. On the, the other side, it says, okay, so uh, Jessica Telephone up to bat. Jessica Telephone can't move because she's encased in a giant peanut. And then you get the next at bat, and it says, "Oh, she gets a triple." And then it, you just you're just watching somebody. You're just watching the the stats pop up. But what's made the game so awesome is the fact that the fans and they've encouraged this. The fans have made up all the lore, all of it. Fraser Schmergel, who just got incinerated, was a puppet. Yeah, that's what the Hades Tigers decided. He was a puppet. Um. Billy Boy, what'd you say? I think some people confuse a habit with a rut. I sort of expect someone to start a baseball web ring. No, not a web ring. Oh, Lord. Um, it's not that badly designed. It's just mostly text. Um... But yeah, there's a wiki that explains a lot. There's a Discord with very helpful fans. Um, yeah. But uh, to get back on topic, uh, Billy Boy said, I think some people confuse a habit with a rut. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because are you saying like a like a bad habit of confuse a habit with rut. So you're saying if I'm somebody who just gets up and never puts on pants, just stays in my pajamas all day and eats candy for breakfast and macaroni for lunch and chips for dinner, 
it may feel like I'm in a rut, but I'm in a habit. But I'm, those are all habits I'm teaching myself. That's, uh, that's what it sounds like. Uh, again, I wear the wrong glasses. I got them text today that my new glasses were in. I'm very excited. Look, everything's clear. Brenny, I forget the name of it, but your baseball commentary reminds me of that website story from five to six years ago of a continental-wide football game that ducked hurricanes. Yes! I totally forgot about that. But that actually had some images, didn't it? Yeah, what I love is um, all the art people have come up with. My my daughter did a, uh, she's a fan of the Kansas City Breath Mints, and she did a baseball card mock-up of one of the characters who I believe the lore is he was somebody else's shadow and is now like a body is forming around him so she's got like a guy who's half shadow and then half you can see like trying to build a human from the bone up and it's like gruesome and and pretty it's just awesome um Alt Devil Bunny's writing days. Wow, wow, we are we are going back there, aren't we? Uh, okay, Quimmy. Uh, if I if I try to make a habit, but then my brain gets bored. Yeah, there's that. It's uh, the Atomic Habits thing does a lot of uh, bad habits are usually things that reward us in the short term, say, the, the nicotine hit of a cigarette, and hurt us in the long term, like cancer. And uh, good habits are the ones that kind of annoy or inconvenience us in the short term, making your bed, going for a run, but pay off in the long term. And, um, yeah, it's got a lot of, of like tying rewards to good habits, such as a guy who set his net, like, cobbled together, I don't know what he did, something magical with computers, but took his exercise bike and hooked it up to his TV so that Netflix would only run when he was pedaling. So if he wanted to binge watch, he was going to have to work for it. Things like that. I consider a rut negative and limiting. Yeah. But bad habits, something to break. Um, anyway, I'm still working my way through the book, but the, the just the idea of forming the habit, even if you hate it, even if you don't do a lot of it, you're still training your brain, and someday when, someday it'll be easier. That's That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to learn to make this more automatic and easier and something you just don't think about but uh, is there anything else people would like me to talk about um, answer questions see how anybody have any thoughts about what I should play tonight I've been playing how to full boyfriend not getting a lot of views but it could be because I'm streaming at night, and uh, I am not a teenage boy playing Fortnite, no matter how I try. Uh, while you guys think, I'll make show notes. Okay. Oh, Jay, one theory I learned recently is you should avoid telling people of the habit you are trying to encourage in yourself, because saying that you're doing something counts as doing it for your subconscious. I've heard that, and I've heard the opposite. Of it, it creates accountability. So, like with the world watching you, you'll be more mo motivated to do it. So it's like, which one is true? For me, I'm betting it's the first one, because I have problems with my um, with my subconscious deciding I'm done. For example, like with with streaming, like I'm sitting down at the computer with the mic and I'm talking to you guys, and then, um, when I'm done, I think I'm done. And then, like, later, I'm like, no, I gotta, I gotta 
edit that and put it in the stream for everybody else. I'm not done, but my brain's just like, I'm done. So it's, I have to be careful, honestly. Sometimes when I, I gotta make sure that my brain does not think I'm done when I am done. So I possibly am the one, uh, yeah, who, who that's talking about. So I've heard both things, Jay. So if, if anybody wants to try one of them or the other, let me know. <laughs> we can do like a non-scientific test. Um, would I have headaches to limit my creativity? I don't know. Sometimes. I don't, I don't, I don't feel foggy. When I take the prescription meds, I feel foggy. But um, I don't have like problems with noise or light or anything. It's all muscular. So, and a bone spur in my neck thing. Um, so, yeah. I'd be watching the game stream, but that's a difficult time for me to watch. Yeah, Cheryl, I know. It's uh, dinner time where you are. Uh, I bet how motivating or demotivating telling somebody about your goal can be depends on the person's personality. Makes sense. Yeah, sometimes just planning something feels like I've done it. Time to move on from K. Taylor M., I think it's different for different people. I, I'm an accountability kind of person and need someone to badger me about my stuff. Yeah, badgering's good. It's good. Um, yeah, I think I might be the first person, which is why I've been so nervous and talking about an idea I have before I actually start work on it. But I have told like two people, like a collaborator and my husband, so I'm hoping my brain doesn't think that's done. I think I'm the accountability type because I'm really good at guilting myself about lying to someone. <laughs> that makes sense. That does. Um, so yeah, if anybody tries the accountability thing either way, e either does the accountability thing and finds it turns their creativity off or hides it close together, let me know if anything works out for you. I just like to know what people are trying out there because I think that's the problem with all of this advice, all of it, which is it may not work for your personality or your situation or your lifestyle or your physical limitations, which is why I say take every piece of writing advice, even the stuff I'm saying with a grain of salt, because if it doesn't work for you, that doesn't mean you can't write. That just means what I suggest doesn't work for you. But uh, I think I'm going to close it down now. I really appreciate you guys in the chat for showing up. Thank you for the followers and the subscribers. Um, if you would like to watch next Tuesday's I Should Be Writing, it'll be at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time and Thursday, 12.30 p.m. But I do an Ask Me Anything just hang out chat on uh, Mondays at 12.30. And then I game Thursday nights and Sunday afternoons. That may change, though. Um, would I be interested... Uh, Todd asked if I'd be interested in streaming a different game than Howdiful Boyfriend. I... Yeah, I mean, I like a lot of different games. Uh, some I'd like to try and maybe have a first-time playthrough. And... Um, uh... But I kind of want to finish Out of a Boyfriend, too. So I'll see. Maybe I'll do one and then another one tonight. I don't know. I also want to try Oxygen Not Included. Because I am I love that game, but I'm awful. I'm awful at it. Terrible. Um, but yeah, that's my schedule. If you want to subscribe to the podcast because you can't make every live stream, that is at merverse.com or anywhere you can subscribe to podcasts, you'll find I Should Be Writing. And Patreon support is patreon.com slash mightymur. You'll get access to the Discord, uh, which is always busy, but now ramping up now that NaNoWriMo is kind of on the horizon. And um, also get access to all of the archives. And, um... Yeah, I think that's all the shilling. Oh, Escape Pod Anniversary 
I co-edited the book. It's an anthology. It's awesome. It has a six-week story in it, and that will be that's on pre-order. It's on sale October 20th. So uh, check it out in your area and see if you can get a copy. I love your powerful boyfriend streams. Please don't stop. <laughs> well, that that actually is lovely to hear, Primalina. I I appreciate it. Uh, I really enjoy doing Howdiful Boyfriend, but the the minimal audience I've had has actually gone down, and so I'm I'm kind of worried a little bit. Even though I keep telling myself it's it's noob streamer problems and things will get better. Um, have I ever tried Starbound? I no, I haven't. I don't know what that is actually. Uh, is baseball going on at that time? If you mean baseball, Todd, uh, baseball goes on all day, every day. There's one game an hour. I might stop in the middle of the night, but I'm not sure. So yeah, there will be baseball that night. I've thought about doing a live baseball like color commentary, but I don't know if I want to do it alone. That's the problem. But there is a uh, there is a guy doing baseball radio, unofficial, but he's doing an amazing job. It's just, he's not as regular as I wish he were. He tries to stream on Wednesdays, and yesterday I was just waiting and hoping, and he never showed up, but this is why I'm trying to take it seriously, because I'm seeing how <laughs> I get, uh, when, when now one of my favorite streamers doesn't show up. But, um, yeah, the... I probably will do some more How to Full Boyfriend. I may try. I may try to live call some baseball. Who knows? We'll see how many people are there to hear it or be annoyed. Um, but otherwise, that's that's me. I'll be doing it tonight. And I think I've shilled everything and told you all my things. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Mighty Mur. If you're listening to this on the podcast, and. Uh, Starbound is a mix of Stardew Valley and Minecraft with side scrolly platformy goodness. Ah, uh, you lost me. Can't uh, platform. Hate them. Too frustrating. Way too frustrating. I'm sorry. It sounds awesome. It sounds like something I'd like to watch someone else play. Like Celeste. Celeste was a beautiful game. I watched my daughter play it. But anyway, guys, thank you for showing up. Take care of yourselves. Wear your masks. And remember, you should be writing. And, you know, bad days might be good in the long run. So think about it. I'm going to be pondering this idea myself. Remember, you can support the show at patreon.com slash mightymer. I should be writing the theme music provided by John Emilio. You can find more about him at johnemilio.com. This podcast is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license. I should